go and it's by, by political parties. So you've got, you haven't got an independent view. Uh, the commission should be open to all citizens. They have a right to be considered to be a candidate for the commission. Now you have 2% of the population, which is card carrying members of political parties, uh, are members of the commission. So 98% of the population, it seems to me, have been uh, restricted and thrown out of consideration. So the major problem is having an independent commission. At the time of Halstein, he wasn't actually, never had political experience at the time. He was a lawyer. Uh, uh, and uh, Jean Monnet was never a member of a political party. So, so the, the independence of the commission seems to be primarily the, the point where we've got into this trouble. So the, the origin of the problem relates to not to having a political takeover of the institutions. Yeah. I, I think you, you, you really made, made a very important point. Um, um, the, the system of the commission uh, has um, um, has changed totally from a system of administering Europe or applying law, full stop, to a system where they more and more conceive themselves as, government, as a government. And their self, uh, their, their understanding of itself is that they are politicians. If you talk to, to the commissioner for competition, he first of all says, I'm a politician. Well, <clears throat> um, I think the problem can be overcome once you reduce the commission to the utmost of, or maximum of 10 people. Because then we have to abandon the uh, proportionate uh, uh, allocation of uh, a commissioner to Luxembourg, a commissioner to this or that country. And you have to find personalities, you have to find personalities who are technically very strong, really experts in their domain, and who can claim not to be an envoy of this or that country. Uh, that is the great problem of Europe, finding the European personality uh, who, uh, despite being born as Czech, uh, uh, take into account what is happening in, in Poland, which means that they are very multilingual. But apart from that, the, the trend within the European Com Commission is, is the contrary. They want to become more government, they want to be uh, a countervailing power to the member states, and they consider themselves as being totally sovereign in interpreting what is the interest of Europe, and they consider themselves as totally uh, irresponsible. Uh, and irresponsible as far as the question is concerned, whether or not they are going to enlarge new fields of activity. Uh, and uh, so we would need, if the, there is no um, um, there, there's no way to, to for a self-cure of the Commission, which can only be made by the member states. Uh, in as much as the so-called smaller countries all want to have their commissioner, it's impossible to reform the process. Uh, but if, if that self-cure is impossible, then we need a countervailing power, some sort of supervisory board, a uh, Senate, which simply says, let's say with 50 people, Stop. Don't intervene in this field. I'm, I'm pretty convinced that the so-called subsidiarity actions by the national governments will not become efficient because the national governments, at least those who have the competence to do it, are on the other side. They want to fuel the motor of so-called European integration. In, in Germany, the German parliament, which is a relatively professional parliament, uh, uh, the, the, the people who are by nature uh, pre-selected to uh, make complaints about a lack of subsidiarity, saying to the Commission, stop, fingers off, well, they are in the, in the Commission for European Affairs. And by nature, by definition, they tend to enlarge competence. They want to give leeway to the European Commission. So you, we need a countervailing power of people being les sages, wise men or women, saying, stop. The European community is in great trouble because there is a competence overload and they interfere with things they should not in have interfered. There is too much money. Look at Barroso, look at the Polish Commission in charge of finance. They even want to create euro taxes. Uh, this is a ludicrous idea. Uh, 
uh, because this is this would be the end of the European Community because they would all of a sudden self-finance and create by oh, their own funding new competences which they are unable to administer. My opinion is that there is a, has been a turning point of the history um, by the president of Jacques Delors, who really made the Commission mutate into um, a, a some sort of quasi government and who had this concept of a European government, which is a very French concept. Uh, this is not the, 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 the at least not my uh, vision. Uh, I'm in favor of limited government, very limited government, and the Commission's task was to apply the treaty, full stop, and not to uh, create new agencies for this. And we have a list of agencies which have been created in the name of Europe. Yeah, the European Court of uh, Accounts has never put his nose into all that. He should. Uh, so we need radical reform, and we need the self-restraint of the European community to focus on the tasks where the European community can succeed and is bound to succeed, and contrary to those who claim uh, sovereignty in this field, I'm of the opinion, so I, I run the risk of being uh, suspected of being a German goalist, we need more European defence. Because the, the defence budgets which are spent in Lithuania, which are spent by well, almost all countries except Britain, France, Spain, Italy, Germany and Poland, they, this is spending money on things which uh, do not serve the combativeness of our armies and do not serve the purpose of being potentially capable of defending the continent. It's as simple as that. So we need reform in that field. And this is a historically unique moment because Germany has no military ambition. No military ambition. Could I just... Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I think well, uh, we really need to give everybody okay. a chance. Um, Mr. and then... I'm Joshua Chapman from the Financial Times. I was just curious about your comment uh, that even if the euro breaks up, we still expect European integration to continue. Dutch Public Television. Anyways, I would like to 
pose a very down to earth question. The, the politicians, our Minister of Finance, always defends uh, the saving of the euro. It's in the interest of the Dutch taxpayers. And I think that's what most of the Ministers of Finance argumentation is. Uh, do you basically disagree with them? And can you explain that it's really in the interest of all our taxpayers not to help Greece, Portugal? Is, is it finally a consequence that we would be better off not helping? Yes, thank you very much.